Hey guys, it's Jack with Jacked and Lean. Today, we're gonna to be starting off a series on exercise equipment, something I'm super passionate about, and I think you guys should be too, because it's ultimately the tools that we'll use to drive results with ourselves, with our clients. Now, a lot of times, I don't think people understand why they're using certain machines and the mechanics behind them, so the purpose of this series is for me to break down the mechanics of them in a way that you can understand, and ultimately provide some insights in why I choose machines that I choose, and how I would implement them and modify them to fit yourself or your clients. Today we're gonna to start off with some chest presses. I'm gonna break down levers, cams, some basic ones you might find in the gym. So let's get to it. So the first machine I want to start off with you guys for this chest press series, and we'll cover all kinds of different body parts, is gonna be a lever-based press. Okay, so most traditional chest presses that you might think of like a hammer strength press, for example, those are simple lever presses, meaning they have a movement arm here with the load and then an axis of rotation, okay? Like when I move, this is all that moves. There's no cam, there's no belts, no pulleys, no nothing redirecting any line. So benefit of a, of a lever is that it's, it's simple. We can gauge exactly where that load is gonna be at any point in time but that's also somewhat the detriment is that it's subject to gravity. And even like the arc we travel in is subject to the length of this movement arm here. So when we're looking at how to break down a lever and what position of the, the range of motion that it loads, we need to look at the distance between the load here and the axis of rotation. When this is at its longest, right? Now gravity is acting down on the weight here, right? This is gonna create the most load in the motion. As we come up to the top of the rep here, right? That load starts to move back towards the axis of rotation, meaning that is now letting off because as this lever comes more perpendicular with the axis of rotation here, either on the top or if it was at the bottom, there's no load. The greatest distance from that axis, once again to the load, and now the line of force of gravity here, that is going to be the greatest, it's called moment arm, right? And now wherever we're at in the position of the range of motion, is that's the position that's gonna be loaded the most. So, so just so you guys can see this in action, real quick, I'll demonstrate this one for you. So remember, longest distance from axis rotation to load, and then the line of force here, okay? This one is gonna be loading me in this lengthened position because this is where it's longest. As I press up, that load moves back towards the axis of rotation, so therefore it is letting off and I'm getting my greatest amount of load here. So one more consideration here is gonna be the distance from where that load is being applied to my actual joint. So for example, like right now, it's pretty much right in line with my joint here. So A, this will make it feel a little bit more comfortable, but we just need to then take into consideration how that's gonna ultimately change the mechanics of the exercise. Because if this load now was all the way over here at this bottom position, my joint being pulled out of position. If it was all the way back here, it would feel a little funky as well. So you need to make sure you choose a machine where it feels good at this range of motion that you're training on. And the length of this arm is gonna determine the big arc that it works in, which is, in my experience and opinion, a limitation of the lever systems is that like I said, you're subject to the length of it and subject to gravity. The second form of resistance that you'll see on a chest press is, is gonna be what's called a linkage system like this Nautilus Explode chest press. A linkage system is essentially a series of levers strung together to create a cam-like effect where it redirects load. So we're not so subject to just how that single arm is moving, which will make the motions feel a little bit more natural like the actual joints of our body moving in synchrony. Uh, on a linkage system, won't get too technical because they can get pretty technical based on the number of, of series of, of movement parts here, but much like a lever, we still need to respect where this load is gonna be greatest horizontally from the axis of rotation because it's still not quite like a belt or a cam. So as I pull up here, okay, we'll see that that load now is furthest from that axis of rotation all the way in the back. So this machine, if I were to hop in and just to demonstrate, at the bottom here, that load is more towards perpendicular with the rotation, axis rotation. So it's gonna be not quite as much load back here. And as I press out, that load moves forward 
hits a little bit harder and I can feel that as I get to the top of the rep here. And that's why I also mentioned the distance to the actual joint as well because as the load does move closer to the joint, it will reduce the total stress on the joint. So if this was like flipped the other way, it would have a different effect. Um, whereas as it's moving a little bit closer to me, it is a little bit less strenuous than if that load was now further back and I was, for example, pressed out here. So, you know, a, a linkage system is cool because it just allows them to redirect the force a little bit differently. If you notice, when I move here, this is another concept called uh, lift ratio. Lift ratio is the distance that the load and the movement arm moves versus how much my body segment moves. So if you notice, as I press, I have a large motion here basically going from back even with my chest all the way to full arm extension, but the load itself doesn't move that far, maybe just like a half a plate width or so. Uh, and that's the lift ratio, those numbers divided together, which, you know, some theories, it may vary based on the actual ratio itself, but really some people think that maybe a shorter lift ratio or smaller lift ratio might lead to more natural motion because you're not like slamming on the brakes at the end, but we also won't have such a drastic adjustment in the actual loading of the exercise. If this were to move a lot greater based on where the distance is, that's gonna be more load pushing down on the lever versus moving a smaller distance. It's gonna be a little more of a consistent load. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. Um, and then the last thing on, on just linkage systems here, remember it's, they, they, sit, they set this up so that it can customize where it's loading the most. Like for example, if this one were to, this lever actually were to start right here, but the arm was a little bit further back, okay, I would have a little more length and load because now as I came up then, that would be more vertical. So when you're looking for a good machine, just be like, okay, where is this perpendicular gonna be the most? That will tell you where it loads. And if you're trying to design one, if you're trying to design for maybe hypertrophy, they all have purposes, but the length and load here, whereas this one had started a little more here, and then I pressed, it would let off a little bit near that end range. The final type of chest press piece I want to cover, uh, because no one really does cable chest presses, is a cam-based chest press. In this case, the Strive, which has now been rebranded as Prime. In my opinion, the all-time best chest presses are the selectorized versions because of the cam. The really cool thing about cams that we don't have with a basic lever or even a linkage system is the almost unlimited ability to manipulate direction of force and amount of force at certain positions of the range of motion. The Strive and Prime machines are really cool because they actually have adjustable cams. Okay, so I can like pull these levers and then this one up to nine different positions, which based on wherever I start that cam, it's gonna be redirecting the amount of force. Okay, so just so you guys can see here, this one, for example, set in more of the lengthened position here. And as I press, the pulley will, a cam's basically a, a modified pulley just with a different shape. It will reorient the line of pull so that at certain positions that weight lets off versus others. Or if I go to a more short position, you can see already that this cable is now at a slightly more angled out position. All of these are once again to just redirect the amount of force so that at certain positions, it grabs more tension. I'll do a video breaking down like the actual in-depth physics of Strive and Prime cams, but just remember in general, a really well-designed cam is really, really hard to beat. Um, like I said, something like this are super manipulatable as far as where we're loading, but with the, the cam and the shape of the cam, it goes from just basically it's a simple cable, essentially just a circular one, which provides constant resistance to one now that provides more what's called variable resistance based on the shape. Okay, and like I said, with some other physics, physics related factors that would influence where you're feeling that load. So uh, just in recap, right, we covered levers, we covered linkage systems, and we co we've covered cams, which are basically advanced pulleys, right? Uh, they all have their place in a plan. It's all about understanding just where that load is being applied and how you wanna you know, uh, implement that into your program for bodybuilding purposes. Like I said, it's good to kind of train something throughout the full range. So something like a Strive, you can do that all in one shot. If you're looking for something for your home gym, would be an awesome piece to have. Otherwise, having something that loads more like a lengthened position, like with a lever, and then maybe a more shortened position lever or something like that Nautilus uh, with a linkage system on there, then you kind of have 
the full spectrum. If you guys have any other questions on any of these machines or you, know, you want me to evaluate a chest press for you, please feel free to send me a message or drop a comment below. We'll be doing so many more of these videos. Uh, stay tuned.